All right, Shalom, Shalom. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Bahasham, Racha Kodash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings and many salutations to you, elect Akiyam, across the four winds of this earth, pushing this word in sincerity and in truth. And Shalom to you, believers out there that believe in the words of our testimony. All right, and those believers, all right, are those men women and children that believe all right and all those make up of the elect the 144,000 and the rest of the believers that are going to get delivered up into the chariots all right as the scriptures call them a peaceable multitude okay i'm the brother sha'ar from the great most on dallas camp coming at you all with a, a testimony actually all right um the lord's will it's inspiring all right, um, Lord's will is edifying. And um, it's going to be based on a dream that I actually had last night. Okay, it's based on a dream that I had last night. And uh, the past few days, I've been uh, meditating heavy. It's been heavy on my mind, just pretty much how um, I did a lesson on it yesterday as well, going into whatever situation the spirit has you in, whether you're surrounded by... Um, troops of men, whether you're surrounded by your enemies, whether you're laying on a chair and, and bind it down and they're trying to put the chip in you, whatever the case is, the Lord brought you for that to, there for, for a reason. All right. And that reason is to glorify his name. All right. That reason is to glorify his name. So he will lift up and set up a standard. OK, so um, in my dream, uh, I had a very I mean, just a strange night's sleep in general. Because um, I just fell asleep on my couch, no cover, anything like that. Just kind of just fell asleep. And I woke up at like nine in the morning and told myself, you know what? I, I, I want to have a comfortable night. I can't say night sleep. It was nine in the morning when I woke up. But I walked into my bedroom, turned my fan on and just laid down in my bedroom, you know, and just said, I'm going to sleep for about an hour and a half because I'm still tired. You know, I get off work pretty late. So I don't I don't wake up super late, but I don't wake up super early neither. You know, so as I went back in, in, to, to sleep, you know, constantly it was playing through my head. Stoic, 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 be more of a stoic, you know, and um, the Bishop Itazawam and myself, we did a lesson last Thursday titled Stoic Mode. And we just touched up on um, on um, going into how um, we want to we'd rather have a stoic mindset than an Epicurean mindset. The Epicurean mindset goes by a pretty much way of living a microwave mentality lifestyle, instant gratification, but stoic being more disciplined, being more disciplined minded, serious minded and showing no fear. All right. And in, in the things that the normal person will show fear to. All right. Mind of a stoic. OK, so that constantly was playing out through my, through my mind. And in the first part of my dream, it's like I'm teaching a class or something like that, going into who the Stoics were and how they started off, you know, and where the word comes from. You know, that's in my dream. And then the next part of my dream, you know, how dreams are weird. You know, I believe this is a vision sent by the Lord. So, you know, how visions are a little strange. The next scene of, in my um, vision, I'm in downtown Cleveland, you know, and I'm walking and I see one of my old um, acquaintances from high school, you know, and this guy from high school, he's just a, being honest with you in high school, he was just a grimy, sleazy nigga. You know what I'm saying? He was a, excuse my French, but I'm just describing it the best way that I can. But he was a, a very grimy, very sleazy nigga in high school. And he envied me too, because I was, I was new at that school. And, um, you know, girls liked me and everything like that. A lot of, a lot of girls liked me. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, when I first met him, I was just I was just cool. But he would call me a B word, quote unquote, jokingly, you know, act like he was playing. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, you a, you a B, you a B type stuff. And I didn't even know the guy. You know what I'm saying? I didn't even know the dude. But I, I, I was cool. So I'm like, hey, man, F you, man, F you, nigga. You know how it is. I was a sophomore, you know, just young. You know, and he used to always, you know what I'm saying, try to try to um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Uh, I can't think of a word, but uh, but anyway, he used to always try to, to try to prove me, like try to fight me and shadow box me and slap box me. But he would try to go extra hard on me for some reason. So that's just the relationship that I had with this guy in high school. I just knew if I seen him, it was going to be a slap, a slap box session and everything like that. 
you know, man, you know, it is what it is. That's not what the dream is about, but just giving you the rundown on this guy. And I ran into him in Cleveland. You know what I'm saying? In my dream, I was in like downtown Cleveland going somewhere. I don't even know. But I parked my car at a meter. I parked my car at a little meter. You know, you put your coins in there, swipe your card, and you got a few hours that's reserved. And I see him, and I'm just being cool. You know what I'm saying? Because we grown now. We're adults. You know, I ain't going to say his name. But I'm like, hey, what's up? I was like, hey, what's going on, man? You know what I'm saying? Not that I was excited, but I was just, you know, again, we grown. You know, maybe he matured up. You know what I'm saying? Hey, hey what's happening, bro? Oh, man, yeah, what's going on, man? What's going on? And I just seen a look at a nigga's eyes, and I'm like, man, yeah, this nigga got demons on him. You know, so I'm walking to my destination, and he's walking with me. You know, so part of my mind is like, man, I am not trying to get tangled up with this nigga and his BS, man. You know what I'm saying? Because you can just see the look in his face, and you can see the demons he had in his eyes. You can see he wasn't right. You know what I'm saying? It's like he's grown since high school, grown into even more of a demon since high school. You know, so so I'm walking, you know what I'm saying? And I get the vibe that, uh, well, you know, as he's talking, listening to his conversation, you know, he's he's now evolved into an OG, an OG of, of, a, of a gang. You know what I'm saying? Just by hearing his conversation. So now he has he has goons under him type stuff. You know what I'm saying? So you see the cockiness to him you see the, the you get the vibe of from him that he yeah, can't nobody touch me i'm untouchable i'm an og you know so anyway so i'm getting ready to walk through this door to this building and he's right there and he's holding something i don't even know what he was holding he was carrying something when we were walking i can't even remember it was something awkward that had nothing to do with the dream you know what i'm saying but uh anyway so i turn back around and i see this guy right off in like this this little mini car, like a baby car, like like it was a toddler's toy car. That they could, it wasn't a power wheel because it was a car, but it was small, you know, and the toddler was standing behind the car, turned the opposite direction, talking to their parents. So they couldn't see this guy right off and steal this little kid's little car. You know, so I'm, I'm looking and I see that little smirk. You know what I'm saying? And he's riding off like a little, little gremlin demon smirk he's making. And he just rides off. You know, so in my mind, I'm like, dang it. I'm going to act like I ain't even see it. I ain't trying to get caught up in this guy's mess. I ain't trying to get caught up in no nigga stuff. So I just hurried up and went through the door. You know what I'm saying? To go to where I had to go to. You know, so I walk out of the door later on. And when I walk out of the door, I'm in a completely different area. Now, mind you, it's not it's not downtown Cleveland no more, but it's like just it's still buildings and houses and everything like that. It's just not tall, tall buildings, but it's buildings and it's dark outside now, you know, but it's a completely different area when I walk back out the door. You know, so as I walk back out the door, I'm getting ready to, to walk back towards my car. And there's some there's some police officers, you know, that 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 run up on me and they kind of got a tow truck behind them. And my car is on a tow truck. But the back of my car, I have an SUV and the latch that opens up, you know, the back of an SUV where you open up to store particular things that was gone. You know, they were like, it's your car. I was like, yeah, that's my car. What, what the heck happened to my car? He was like, yeah, we got some things we want to talk to you about, man. Um, do you know this guy right here? He wasn't with. Well, I'm going to say this. He wasn't with them, but they were telling me how he was. You know, they were trying to get him. They were pretty much trying to get him and everything. And um, they knew who he was. You know, so in my mind, I'm like, dang, I'm not trying to snitch. I'm not trying to get caught up in this guy's mess. He already has a bunch of I already hate niggas as it is, you know, and I'm not trying to get caught up in no in no nigga stuff. And that's what I'm saying in my mind. So I'm like, dang it, man. You know, so then it gets to the point where I'm evaluating things in my mind. I'm like, man, I'm not about to get in trouble and thrown in jail just because I randomly bumped into some nigga. You know what I'm saying? That I knew back years ago in the world on the street that's doing some grimy stuff. You know what I'm saying? So um, so I told the cops, I was like, hey, man, look, if I tell y'all who this dude is and what he did, will y'all leave me alone? And and are y'all going to promise me that I'm going to be good? Like he ain't he, he, he you know, he ain't going he going to be gone for a while. And they were like, yeah, yeah, he's going to be gone for a while. And even if he comes out early. I mean, what we'll do is we'll just dress you up like a cop, you know, as a disguise. That way he'll think you're a cop. And as soon as he said that, in my mind, I'm like, man, what the heck is he talking about? <laughs> in my mind, I'm like, what? Dress me up as a cop. 
You know, so anyway, as he's explaining himself, there is these, some, some goon niggas that run up to the car. You know, it's about three of them. One of them real tall, real tall, like probably like seven foot five, real tall. You know, they was like goons, you know, and they're like, hey, what's up, y'all? What's going on? How y'all doing? Type stuff. And in my mind, I'm like, oh, Lord, have mercy. You know what I'm saying? Here we go. This will be around the time right when I'm about to right when I'm about to tell. You know what I'm saying? It's like they knew it or something like that. So and it's a bunch more, a bunch more goons that came out of nowhere. Like, like this dude had a mini army of just of just grimy, dingy, dirty street niggas. You know what I'm saying? So in my mind, I'm like, oh boy. And it's only a few cops. You know what I'm saying? It's only a few cops. It's probably like four cops total. You know what I'm saying? So they pull the cops to the side. They're like, hey, we, we, mind, why don't we talk to y'all? And the cops are like, yeah, we'll talk. Obviously, it's a dream because they know cops don't just walk to the cut with a gang with a gang full of just niggas. You know what I'm saying? So I'm looking in the cut and seeing what's going on. And it's a bunch of commotion and riffraff. And they end up killing the cops. You know, mind you, it's hell of niggas. It's a lot. It's a lot of them. And when I say niggas, I'm talking about, you know, street niggas. You know, street girls, like, you know, there's certain girls that's, that, that, that rep, they, rep those sets too, you know what I'm saying? And they, they do grimy stuff as well, but it was just a bunch of goon, grimy, dingy niggas. And I, I hate these type of niggas. I really, and I'm just being honest, I really have a deep disdainment for niggas. You know, the disdainment that I have toward niggas is dang near as much as I have for Esau. It's just in a different way because Esau's the devil, you know, but these niggas ain't supposed to be that wicked but they are so it makes me hate them too in that same way you know so anyway i'm in my mind i'm like the coast is clear i'm about to run off and i'm about to leave you know so as i as i run off i'm jogging off not that i'm i'm not running fast so they can hear my footsteps but i'm kind of doing a creep jog away and, and it's two other people that's that's running with me i don't know who they are you know they're just extras to the dream i guess you know so the niggas get up from killing the cops and they look and they like, get this nigga. So it's a it's a wave. It's a hell of these people that's running towards me. And I start running faster. And the people that's running, they're like, oh, snap, go. They, they chasing us. They chasing us. You know, so. So anyway, so I stop. I'm like, excuse my friends. I'm sorry, y'all, but I'm just giving y'all giving y'all the dream. If y'all get offended at this language, man, just just turn the, just turn the video off. You know, but I stopped me like, fuck that. You know what I'm saying? Like, pretty much like, do y'all know the God that I serve type stuff? So as they're running toward me full speed, I turn back around and the other two people are kind of running slowly after me. Like, man, come on, come on. You know, and I'm walking toward this group of niggas. I'm walking toward them very slow, like something's about to happen. Like the Lord is about to do something, you know, and they're running toward me full speed. And I put my hands up and I pray to the Lord. I'm like, Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Recha Kodash, Shalach, Machaza. And I say that in my dream. And that word Machaza, all right, goes into the word vision. You know, and I asked the Lord to send me vision in my dream. Now, what made me ask for vision, for, for, for say, I really don't know. I can't, I can't explain it. You know, but when you go into that word makazah in the Hebrew, that word is vision, but it also goes into being ecstatic or overly excited. You know, it means to be overly excited or be ecstatic, not overly excited in a negative way, but to be ridiculously hype. You know what I'm saying? That's what it means to be ridiculously hype as well. You know, so I was like, Yahawabah Shem Yahawashah Shalach Makazah. Yahawabah Shem Yahawashah Shalach Power. And I said it again, Yahweh, and I, I said it loud. That way, everybody that was around me heard it. I was like, Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh, Shai, Shalak, power. And I yelled it real loud. And as soon as I yelled it, I felt this, this chill go up my spine. And as they're running toward me, I was looking at them with a very stoic look, a very fearless look, a very just look of no emotion. And I started floating in the air. I started levitating in the air. I probably levitated probably about a good 50 feet in the air. And I'm just looking at them. And they're running and kind of they're slowing down, looking like, what the heck? You know, and I'm just looking around. And when I say I, I open my mouth 
and I yelled out this loud, high-pitched scream. Like, I'm a grown man, so, we, you know, obviously we have a bass to our voice, but this scream, the best way I could explain it for, for you fellow nerds out there that watch anime and Dragon Ball Z, you know, some of y'all probably like got a smirk in y'all face like, hey, I know exactly what he's going to talk about. Y'all remember um, the older episodes when Gohan was a little child and how he used to have them rage bursts. And when he had that rage burst, everybody, even the, the deadliest of enemies would be like, what the heck? It would stop them in their tracks. You know what I'm saying? Now, what I'm getting at is how loud the pitch was. You know, I mean, I'm not going to do it in the lesson, you know what I'm saying? But just picture a loud scream like that, but with the strange frequency afterwards. You know what I'm saying? To the point where those people that were that were under me. And when I say under me, because I was floating all those niggas again, it was it was a lot of them. You know what I'm saying? They stopped in their tracks and students. I started screaming real loud and it got louder. Everything that was under me, it was like a shockwave that that just. Like when a, a missile, like a, when a missile hits and that shockwave hits and things just start turning in the dust and getting obliterated and flying away. That started happening in the dream. The building started, started disintegrating, turning in the dust. Niggas started falling back, you know, like the wind was so strong, they was falling back. You know what I'm saying? The earth started shaking real loud. It started quaking. And then I stopped the screen. And then it's like they are looking, waiting for something else. You know, a lot of them were already dead. You know what I'm saying? They were already dead, broken to pieces, you know, and then I inhaled very deep and I screamed another loud, high pitched scream. And there was a blue laser that shot out of my mouth like a light. <laughs> it was a loud, high pitched scream. And I'm like, ah! and I, I screamed real loud again. And it was a blue fire a, a, a concentrated laser beam that shot out of my mouth. And when I said it was mowing the rest of these niggas down, bro, they didn't stand a chance. They was getting turned into powder and dust. They were like, like war of the worlds, like war of the world. When all uh, those chariots come and they shoot those lasers, you know what I'm saying? They turned the dust. Well, this was a little different because it was cutting these people in half. But when the laser beam touched their flesh to cut them in half, it wasn't no blood or anything. It was dust like it was just incinerating that part of the body it was touching. And I just kept every time everywhere I moved my head, the laser beam traveled out of my mouth and moved that way. If y'all can understand, that's really the best way that I can put it. And I'm talking about I'm screaming and it's just it's just fire and, and laser just destroying everything that it touches. The rest of the buildings are getting chopped in half. Niggas are turning into dust. Niggas are dying. I can say that nobody got put to flight because they didn't have an opportunity to get put to flight. You know, obviously the scriptures say that we're going to put people to flight, you know what I'm saying? And which means there's going to be so much death and chaos that the Lord is going to put the spirit on his meant to do that. The leftovers are going to run away. What I'm saying in this dream, there were no leftovers to run away. You know, the earth shook and it quaked. All right. And, and when I yelled the first time, stuff started turning in the dust and being obliterated. And that killed a large portion of them dudes already. And then the second wave was that was that laser, that light that shot out of my mouth. And it took care of the rest of it. You know, and um, and that was that was the dream. It, it, it ended after that. You know, after everything was done, all you saw was smoke, you know, the wind blowing ash everywhere, just ashes and dust is it, blowing. You know what I'm saying? Um, and at first I wasn't going to do going to do a lesson on it. You know, but I called one of the bros. I called my bro, Taza Ma. We're, we're blood brothers. So every time these type of things happen, he's always one of the first ones I call and tell him about. And he's like, man, bro, you should do a You should do a lesson on that, bro. I, I believe you should. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, you know what? I will do a lesson because it's to glorify your how about shit how shine. You know, and these are the type of things that we we have to expect, you know, especially when that time comes, especially since I did a lesson Touching up on this yesterday, it, 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 how I looked at it, it was an add-on to the lesson that I did. And I'm going to bring this precept out. I got a few precepts that I'm going to bring out. And I'm going to start off in the book of Psalms, chapter 91. And I touched up on this in the lesson that I did yesterday, going into how the angels, you know, whatever. when you're in a particular situation, we all have our hour that's coming. The Lord is going to lift that standard up. 
You know, he's going to lift that standard up and he's going to have his angels take over. And however they take over, it, it's all up to the Most High. It's all up to Yahweh. you know. But um, I'm going to read this in the book of Psalms, chapter 91. And I'm going to start at verse 10. This is Psalms, chapter 91, verse 10. And it reads, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. And just when you go into the atmosphere of when I walked out that building, it was a very dark, gloomy atmosphere. The streets was wet, like, you know, like it got that raining, like it was just wet streets, you know, and it was dark, grimy niggas that was trying to kill us. You know, that was trying to kill me. So when he continue in verse 11, it says, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in thy ways. And when you go into that word keep, it means to guard or it means to watch. All right. And in the lesson that I did yesterday, I touched up on how the Lord can have his angels do anything. He can allow an angel to touch you and you will perform spiritual power and miracles, you know. So they're going to keep guard over you. Verse 12 is the key point. They shall bear thee up in their hands. All right. And I literally levitated and floated up. I was literally being bore up. Now, I can't say I saw angels by me to do it, you know, but I started floating up in the air like I was flying. I was levitating, looking down upon these people. And it says, they shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stones. All right. And that and that goes into just taking an L. The Lord is going to have his angels take charge so you won't take an L. All right. And it starts with trusting in Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Because in that dream, when I turned back around, I had no fear. I was like, I'm not going to I'm not going to worry about these niggas, man. The Lord is on my side. You know, and it makes me think of Psalms 56 and four. When you read it in the NLT, it goes in there when you trust the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Um, you can't fear what no mortal man can do unto you because these people are just mere mortals. OK, if you if you in the spirit of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, you are not a mere mortal. You're not an ordinary person. You have power beyond earthly, earthly comprehension that resides within you. All right. And whatever the Lord uses you for, whatever lot that you have, the Lord is going to use you. He's going to use you when that time is to show forth that power. And it's going to be done to glorify his holy name. OK. But as I was telling the brother Tazama about the dream and he was like, man, you should do a lesson on this, man. He was like, I got a precept, actually. That brother and his precepts, man. Boy. <laughs> man. But um, anyway, he, uh, yeah, I believe he was reading that before or something like that. So it was fresh in his mind. You know, but the precept that he brought out, and I'm about to read it, literally goes hand in hand on what happened to those niggas in that dream. So this is the book of Psalms, chapter 18. And I'm going to start at verse, uh, let me see here, 41. This is Psalms 18 and 41. Matter of fact, I'm going to go straight to the point. This is verse 42. Psalms 18 and 42. It says, then did I beat them small as the dust before the wind. Those people literally turned to dust before the wind. And this is the type of power that he promised unto his elect. All right. As, as David is talking about this, and this is a song right here. This is the power that is also going to be given unto the house of David. The Lord's will and we're of the house of David. OK, but it said, then did I beat them small as the dust. When I say that laser beam touched them and ripped them into pieces and they turned into dust, I kept turning my head back and forth. Every time I seen somebody trying to escape, that laser hit them and they died. You know, they died. And the first time when I screamed. The earth shook and, and, and the, the, the scream was so potent, it caused the buildings to fall down and collapse. And stuff was literally turning into dust. Literally, it, it couldn't fathom the frequency. It literally, not only did they fall down and break, but they turned into dust. You know, like, like when you read it in Joshua. All right, when we had to circle around, circle around Jericho, the city of Jericho, for those first six days one time. And the seventh day, we circled around it seven times. And right afterward, we were commanded to yell. And when we yelled, the walls came crumbling down. That was the energy. That was the vibe that happened when I screamed. You know what I'm saying? Everything came tumbling down. Niggas turned to dust and started disintegrating. And the leftover niggas died from the second time when I yelled. When that fire, when that, when that light came out of my mouth. 
you know, and they turned into dust, you know, and after everything was done, all you seen was smoke and dust. And the people that were left there that, that was running were looking in astonishment, like what the heck just happened? You know, but when you continue, it says, then did I beat them small as the dust before the wind? I did cast them out as the dirt in the streets. And that's literally where we was at. It was in the streets, you know, and that's literally what happened. They got casted out. Dirt blows away when wind blows. They was like dust and dirt. You know, it was no more nigga left, man. You know, no more niggas left. You know what I'm saying? And I'm obviously, of course, when Esau cracks down, these are the type of things that are going to happen. But, hey, man, the day that's approaching, man, there's going to be people, even of our own people, that are going to turn against us. You know what I'm saying? When I say our own people, I'm talking about just Israelites, just so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. They're going to they're gonna turn against you. And when these miracles are performed, when this stuff happens, man, it's going to be so severe that these people are going to think we got demons on us because they don't know. They don't know Allah shot me. They don't know. They don't know God Almighty. You know, what's about to happen is the Lord is about to bring that energy, that smoke that he brought with Egypt. All right. When our enemies came up against us in different times in history, when the Lord lifted standards, bro, and they died in very dramatic ways. This is the type of energy that's coming back. OK, and these people aren't going to be able to comprehend the power of the Lord. So they're going to say that we got demons on us like they tried to do with Yahweh Shai. But no, that time that's coming, the Lord is about to give his men power. And that's coming, man. I'm going to end it off here in the book of Revelation 11. You already knew this was coming. This is the book of Revelation. Well, maybe some of y'all didn't. I'm saying that jokingly <laughs> because what happened in my dream, literally this this happened here when you read this in Revelation 11. OK. And again, I said that jokingly. So, you know, so I don't you know. But anyway, this is Revelation chapter 11. I'm going to start at verse um, four and it's going into these two witnesses, which these two witnesses goes into the northern and the southern kingdom. OK. And it goes into how he's going to give them power. OK, so Revelation 11 and 4 says these are the two olive trees and two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. That literally happened. <laughs> it literally happened. Fire, laser light. It was like a blue fire, like a blue laser, like a blue light literally shot out of my mouth. And it literally consumed them people that was trying to kill me. And it said, and devoured their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. And that's exactly what happened. They was trying to hurt me. They was trying to kill me. So the Lord had them killed. The Lord had them turn into dust from that fire that came out. You know, so um, I wanted to just go into a, a testimony video touching up on that, man. And it was more so just a video to also encourage y'all. Don't fear. Don't fear what these men can do. Don't worry about what these carnal men can do. The God that is on our side is way bigger than anything that we can even perceive. And that power resides within you. You know, so the possibilities of Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah are endless. And there's going to come a time soon when the Lord is going to show that power in that degree. And he's going to use individuals to do that. All right. There are certain individuals reserved to glorify his name. We're all reserved. If we're the elect, we're all reserved to glorify his name regardless. There's going to be certain ones that are going to get power, though. You know, and he's going to use them for that reason. Now, who are they going to be? I don't know. But the Lord is going to give certain people power. And I believe it's going to happen soon. I believe it's going to happen very soon, man. You know, so I'm going to end the lesson off on that. Lord's willing, that was edifying and encouraging and uplifting and faith boosting. I'm going to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakwadash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations to you, elect. Akiyam across the four winds of this earth, pushing this word in sincerity and in truth. And Shalom to you, believers that are out there that believe in the words of our testimony, which consists of you men, women, and children. Shalom.